But one stock uh, that is lagging the broader market, that is Tesla. Shares right now are off about 10% this coming following yesterday's uh, highly anticipated battery day. And for more on everything we learned from the company during that presentation, we're joined now by Tasha Keeney. She's an analyst over at ARK Invest. So Tasha, let's just kind of take it uh, from the top highest levels takeaway, uh, highest level takeaways from you from what we heard from Elon yesterday. Uh, so the biggest story has to be uh, Tesla's reducing costs by a dramatic amount. So they're planning to reduce battery costs by over 50% on a dollar per, per kilowatt hour basis. Um, their new changes are also increasing the range of the cars by 50%. And then finally, on um, an investment basis, uh, they're reducing investment costs by about 70%. Um, so, you know, this is really dramatic cost reductions. Um, of course, they're going to take place over the next few years, um, but it's going to enable Tesla to produce a car that only costs $25,000. Uh, so, you know, Tesla's always been a leader in electric vehicles. And, and at ARK Invest, um, you know, my colleague Sam Corsis and a lot of great work on batteries. We've been saying for a long time that they're at least three to four years ahead on batteries. I think with these announcements, they're even further ahead. And it's only becoming harder for automakers to cut, to catch up, especially because they're lowering the price, lowering the price of the product. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to get that nice inflection point in demand from electric vehicles as they become cheaper than gas powered cars. Um, I, I really feel like we're we're at that inflection point now. Yeah, and I want to follow up about the Model 2. Were you anticipating that Tesla was going to announce something like this? And I guess as you think about the company going forward, is it, um, you know, they've started at this kind of luxury level and it, it's attracted that consumer base. But have you always seen the company as one that wants to and needs to work downstream in terms of price point uh, and, and needs to be able to broaden uh, its offerings considerably to be competing, you know, with Honda instead of, you know, BMW and Mercedes? Well, I feel like the Model 3 was really, um, you know, the, the cornerstone case of, of creating this mass market car. Um, so, so in a sense, Tesla's, Tesla's already there. They're, they're already competing with major automakers. In fact, um, if you look at just electric vehicles, it's really not a competition. I mean, Tesla's the best um, by far in the market. Um, but we, we did expect Tesla to uh, perhaps uh, introduce some, some lower price variants. Um, and really, this, this also means that you can think of their total market share in the electric vehicle as, as being a, a bigger uh, total addressable market, right? Because you're getting now these consumers um, that would go for this, this lower uh, price bucket. Um, even though, you know, Tesla had already been pulling in consumers from, you know, all price ranges for a lot of people, like Tesla was the most expensive car they ever bought. Um, I, I still think this gives them access to that, to that bottom segment. Um, so, so again, it's just, you know, they're lowering costs, they're sort of expanding their opportunity. Um, and if you're a traditional automaker, I mean, I, I'd be very scared if I was watching this presentation about how you were going to keep up at all. So, Tasha, it sounds like you have a pretty positive takeaway from everything that was announced yesterday when you talk about the fact that the battery then will enable Tesla to lower the price of their vehicle. So then why is the stock off just around 10 percent today? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, th I think it could be that investors are, you know, seeing that three year time horizon. Uh, you know, maybe they're looking for something more immediate. Um, but, you know, I, ARC is a long term investor and we, we think that you have to be a long term investor when you're looking at disruptive innovation, um, because if you're not, you're going to miss these inflection points. You're going to miss that exponential growth. Um, so, you know, to, to be upset about a three year timeline um, when they're announcing this amazing 50 percent cost reduction uh, to me seems a little silly. Uh, so, so I think, you know, we still have a very strong conviction in the stock. It's still our top holding. Tasha Dan Roberts here. Uh, playing off Shauna's point about the stock today, I saw a lot of reports that battery day was underwhelming. Uh, now, you sound very bullish on the batteries. So I'm just wondering why you think some people were underwhelmed. Sounds like maybe the time period. But what were people hoping to see that wasn't there? Uh, and then I, I would just ask you, as along with your bullishness on the batteries, could there be a day when the batteries are a bigger business for Tesla than selling its own cars? Yeah, well, I, th I think these these cost reductions sort of open up our opportunities for them in batteries, um, not just in vehicles, but also in energy storage and other markets. Um, so, I, I, and, and again, I, I, it seems as if the reaction is really just like a, a short-term knee-jerk reaction to this being a, a three-year extended timeline. Um, I think there was a lot of hype going into battery day and, and maybe some people were expecting something more immediate. But I, I don't think that's what you should be looking at if, if you're looking at a company like Tesla that's really pushing the envelope in disruptive innovation. Um, and, and I would say, you know, 
Musk in general, if you look at his track record, um, he's generally sort of um, given these really lofty goals and he often falls short of them. So if anything, I think he's being more measured. I and mean, we've seen, I think, a progression of that over the, say, the past year or so. Um, so I, I think this is really only, only a good thing and it's sort of a sign that they're becoming a more mature company. And then, Tasha, finally, just a headline crossing today, California uh, is going to phase out um, kind of or they want zero emission vehicles uh, statewide by 2035. As you think about this kind of timeline, um, you know, for California, probably the most progressive state as it comes to regulating autos. Um, is that kind of in line with with how you guys at ARC are thinking about, you know, where electric cars go in the U.S.? Uh, is it is it more aggressive than that kind of timeline or is it a little more conservative? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because I, I think, um, you know, often when we talk about electric vehicles, we're also talking about subsidies. But actually at ARC, all the technologies that we model, we model without subsidies because we want the underlying technology to be successful on its own. So I think these these um, announcements of these cost declines are exactly proving that, that you don't necessarily need subsidies for an EV to work. It's going to be cheaper on a sticker price basis than a gas-powered car. Um, you know, that said, uh, we do think that that inflection point in, in terms of that cost parity is, is going to come up in the next two to three years. Um, so I, I, I think you will see a, a surprise in, in demand for electric vehicles. Um, our forecast is that there could be 37 million EVs sold uh, by 2024. Um, so, so I think that, that that surprises expectations because most people have been measuring this growth by looking backwards. Um, at ARC, we, we look forward and we try to, to you know, um, use co these cost decline curves to, to set up the adoption curve for, to, to represent that exponential growth properly. Um, so so I, I, I think, uh, you know, we're, again, we're really at a pivotal time and uh, we couldn't be more excited. All right. Tasha Keeney, analyst with ARC Invest. Uh, Tasha, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks for joining the show.